What's up, golf addicts? DB here, and I think I'm a member of this thing called the Tour Junkies. And this is the Tour Junkies After Dark, presented by DraftKings. DraftKings is a really cool spot to play daily fantasy golf. We are here to talk about daily fantasy golf. If you're wondering to yourself, is there such thing as daily fantasy golf? Why, yes, there is, or we wouldn't be here. Um, Pat Perry is with me. Wave, wave, Pat. Wave. That's Pat. Uh, we're here to talk about the Memorial Golf Tournament, which is weird because it's also Memorial Day that we're recording this. Happy Memorial Day. And to all the veterans and to all those who gave their lives and all those who are currently serving our, our country's military, we salute you. We thank you. We appreciate you. Happy Memorial Day. Um, but it is also the Memorial. 2019 at Jack's Place in Mirfield Village. It's a par 72, around 74 hundy. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the golf course, what we think is important. We just recorded the Tour Junkies podcast. Myself and Pat had a couple of disagreements that we want to hash out here with you. We're going to hash out some disagreements, and at the end, we're going to give you some DraftKings sportsbook plays and some betting odds that we really like. And by the way, uh, we've been pretty nuts. We've been hitting the nuts. On these betting on done well with those, done well with those. I don't know about the whole DK. Boom! That's how these picks have been. They've been boom, boom. They've been really good. So Pat, do you um, wear that shirt every day? I love the shirt. I feel like you've worn it like the last two or three times we've recorded. And I, you ordered me one, but I still haven't seen it yet, so I can't wear. You still haven't got a shirt. Oh, no, it's in my car. I have it. I have it. Yeah. Um, by the way, this is the newest piece of Tour Junkies merchandise in the shop at tourjunkies.com. This hat may be the oldest, the oldest piece, piece You're right. of Tour Junkies that was the, the I hated that hat. I thought it was terrible. This I can't believe you. Flat. This, is a, this is a nice hat. Look at that little, little, monochromatic, little monochromatic thing going on. We'll snap back. We'll snap back. Let's do this, Pat. Why don't you tell us, I don't want to get into like a full-on course breakdown, but what's important at Muirfield? Well, this is a second-shot golf course. You've got to, you know, here's the thing. The rough is thick off the tee, so you do have to hit the fairways, but they're not really that difficult to hit, so that's not something I'm going to be focusing in on. But when it comes to these greens, they are incredibly undulating, bent grass, quick greens, You've got to hit them in the right spot. So that means, uh, like, look, here's the thing. You don't want to be above the hole uh, on, on a lot of shots. You don't want to have these downhill putts where, you know, with huge breaks with the undulation. So you got to hit, hit them in the right spots. That's going to be key. So I'm going to be looking at the guys that are, you know, checking boxes and strokes gained approach. Maybe a little bit of proximity, you know, hitting the ball close to the hole in certain areas. Uh, I think that's going to be important. I think scrambling is going to be important. They are very; these are these are small greens, um, and when they're whenever we see small greens, you got to be good around them if you're going to miss them. Uh, so you got to be a good scrambler. So I think that's going to be key this week. You know, may look a little bit at putting stats on bent grass greens, or maybe if if I really want to look at it, maybe just quick, really quick bent grass greens, but. Other These than that, quick. look, this is a great course. This is a, a classic course. Great Jack Nicholas design. Uh, so looking forward to the weekend. We got a, we got a great field here. I mean, this is this is uh, this is no slouch of a field, you know. Um, no I know, like you're a terrible slouch, DB. But uh, I am not a slouch. I work my. The balls field off. is not. The field is not. This I don't want no scrubs. The scrub is a guy that can't get no love from me. Hanging out the passenger side of his best friend's ride, trying to holler at me. This is not a. Do you know, field. by the way, do you know what the uh, the movie was where um, the words "terrible slouch" came from? No. <laughs> what movie was it? The Goonies. Was it The Goonies? No. Was it E.T.? When you were what? What famous old old ass movie are you referring to? Was it was it big? Was that one of your was that your movie? Oh no! Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead, or was the babysitter thing? No, you. Are, this is this is very disappointing. The labyrinth. You know, the labyrinth. Was it the labyrinth? 
No, in Teen, Caddy- Teen Wolf. In Caddyshack, oh, the movie Caddys- Caddyshack, Chevy Chase calls the says to the judge, "You're a terrible slouch, Judge." It's a very. Oh. It's, I am disappointed I missed that one. Yeah. Anyway. Are you going to play Tiger this week? I am going to play Tiger this week. I like him this week. And here's the thing. We have not seen, you know, every week in and week out, all we're seeing is people talk about, you know, well, I say people, the media, whatever, us touts. We Tiger's are the gonna media. Tiger's going to be high owned. Tiger's going to be high owned. Everybody's going to play Tiger. It's the Tiger effect. I love playing Tiger. When he's in the field, so he's going to be extremely high owned. Well, guess what? We're not seeing what what. You look at GPPs when it came to the 2019 PGA Championship. He was ten percent owned. Where where was I, he at the 2009 PGA Championship? I don't know. Sorry, I didn't mean for me. the Masters. He was twelve point six percent owned. The players thirteen yeah. percent owned. So these are huge fields, good fields, great players. Eleven percent owned at the Genesis. He's just not, he's not low-owned, and I like that about Tiger. He's not low-owned? I mean, he is low-owned. Uh, and, you know, he's striking the ball well. He's just, a, I mean, with his long irons, short irons, whatever you want to do. I mean, look, he may, he, and actually, his driving accuracy has been a little bit better this year than we've seen um, since his comeback. So, I think Tiger's a good play. I like him. I, I will gladly play him this week. Okay, you know one guy. Do you not like him? Do you not have any? I'm actually not going to comment. You're Um, not going to comment at all. No. Um, one guy that you mentioned that I am going to comment on is Justin Thomas. Now, Justin Thomas is very cheap. I did not mention Justin Thomas. I mentioned him on the show. I'm talking about on the podcast. Yeah, Justin Thomas is very cheap, and it is probably the lowest price we've had for Justin Thomas since 2015. Which is enticing, um, but he is coming off a he's coming off a wrist injury, and I said this on the show. If it's a wrist, it scares me. If it's his coccyx or his uh, one of his testicles or um, an ocular bone or something like that, I get it. I'm all on it. But a wrist in golf is quite scary. And I feel like with this week and the next week is the RBC Canadian, which he's never going to play. And then the following week is the U.S. Open. I feel like this is the week where he wants to go out and test it. Okay? He wants to test it. And I don't want to play him when he's testing it. I I feel like a wrist injury in golf is very serious. I can see him being a withdrawal risk. I can see him not being 100%. I do like the GPP attractiveness that he's cheap and he's probably going to be around 10% owned. I don't think it's going to be less than that. I think it's going to be around 10%. I think people are going to like the name and the value enough that they'll play him. But for me, I'm out. You said you were all about it and you are, you are, you are very oddly doing something with your hands that you're giddy about playing him. So you I just go where, ahead. Where, where you, I just thought of something. Where you might not want to test it, that's because you don't have any testicles, <laughs> and you won't play them because you're such. You a are wuss. so excited. You thought about that. I was you're so, so excited. excited. That's why I was going. It's the I most cannot creative. wait to say that you have no testicles whatsoever to not play Justin Thomas at ninety three hundred. Look, if you're going to get him at that price range, play him. Play him. I don't care what the circumstances are. I don't care about your wrists. I don't care whatever. I think the ownership's probably going to be lower, like you mentioned. And look, the guys checking boxes have been playing extremely well this year. And so I'm not going to let a little bit of injury affect what I'm looking at. Like, we saw guys like Kira Deck coming off of ACL, finishing top five at the Byron Nelson, whatever. Like, I don't know, whatever. Hey, man, Kira Deck, Effie Barnrat is a physical specimen. Okay. We'll look, and Justin prepared. Thomas is playing in this tournament. I have a. Pretty good feeling that he's feeling okay. I've seen some stuff on social media. You know, he's playing. He's playing golf. It's not like he's just like golf. He's playing golf. Playing golf. But you know, he checks the box, strokes gained approach, also off the tee, third in par five scoring, and third in scrambling, which I mentioned was going to be key this week. So I like Justin Thomas. I'm fine with playing him. Love it. Okay. God, you have no testicles. 
you're a freaking. Speaking of what? that, I think you have no testicles that you want to fade Charles Howell the third. You mentioned fading Charles Howell. Actually, is... I think that's. I think I think the opposite. That takes major testicles. Everybody wants to play Charles Howell the third. I wonder if DraftKings is going to have to bleep out testicles. <laughs> They could just say, uh... It's a part of the testicles. human anatomy. I don't think they should have to. That's ridiculous. Yeah, they shouldn't have to. Um, yeah, I, I think I think you fading Charles Howell is interesting. I, um... Hey, by the way, I'm not on a real tarmac. I don't know if you've... I don't know if the listeners know this, but... I keep moving a lot, and my backdrop is actually a fabric. This is a fabric airplane. So if you see it I waving am, around... I am in a real wine cellar. Okay. Um, I don't actually have line. a TJ jet. Look, DraftKings doesn't pay line. us enough for that. Oh, wait, you Ooh. didn't. Well, you didn't see that border there. I, see I the like box the box line. line. Yeah. Um, who are we talking about? Oh yeah, Charles Howell. I I don't. I know he hasn't played great the last couple of events, but it's really tough. He's gotten a price discount now on DraftKings. They've dropped his price pretty low, and in the low seven K range. The upside that CH3 has at this event with four par fives that he can take advantage of. Um, it's not a field he's going to be afraid of. I just feel like I feel like this is a spot you play. I like CH3. I disagree with your fate. Well, I don't know. I mean, he's, he has made four straight cuts here, but he really hadn't done all that great. I mean, you look at it in his last four years, his best finish is T31. Ah. And ex- that didn't excite me all that much. And then just like his his form's not very good. I mean, he finished 41st at the PGA Championship. He withdrew, by the way, last minute at the Byron Nelson, which is highly unlike Charles Howell to do. And you you and I texted about that personally. We were like, that is incredibly unlike Charles Howell. So maybe there could be a little bit of an injury we don't know about. By the way, I fear the injury we don't know about more then I fear the injury that we do know about, Ooh. like Justin Thomas, but the guy's coming back to play. So that's just one thing I will say. But then what before that no withdrawal injury? with the Byron Nelson, he missed the cut twice. Wells Fargo, which I think is a very comparable course to what we got this week, and then at the Heritage, which is not a good course at all for, for Charles, So, but he still played there. Um, so I just, I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of him. I think, you know, a lot of people like to play. He, he's the ATM. He's a golfer ATM. PGA Tour ATM. Always yeah. making cuts, always finishing well. You see that guy at seventy three hundred. I think you're going to play him. I'm going to fade him this week. Okay. Love you, love you, CH three. Okay. okay. You got anything else before we move on to the DraftKings sportsbook? Place? No, let's talk about some bets. Well, you just I just put you on the stand and you defended yourself and you didn't come at me with anything. That's interesting. That's good. Okay, what are you drinking there, little rosé? I... Yeah, little I rose. didn't really have anybody that I was like. Yeah, it's hard to disagree guy. with DB. I get it. I yeah, get it. well, I will say I don't. When I'm winning I, all I kind of money, it's tough. I will say Patrick Cantlay at ten two is a little too <laughs> too high for me. Mm-hmm. Patrick Cantlay hits it on the testicles every single time. He is a pure ball striker, and this is a fantastic spot for him. Finished top five here last year, Jack's place. Um, I think it's a sucker bet. I think it's a sucker value. play. It's a sucker it's play. A su- it's not a sucker play. He's a stud. All right, ten two. Let's... He is not a stud. Yeah, yeah, he is a stud. Um, all right, let's Check talk about tape. some. Let's, let's talk about some. Back when I... Huh? What? Nothing. Go ahead. Let's talk about some DraftKings sportsbook plays. Uh, I got to be honest. I think DraftKings is grossly mispricing some guys in the longer odds. You know you know I love some long odds, okay? Um, I love some long odds. And I know the Memorial can be a place where the cream rises to the top because the field is strong. I get it's it. Not lately. The, look at the last five I winners mean, yeah. here. You, you're all right. Duff, like, uh, yeah, if McGirt. Duff, McGirt, Lingmurth can win here, then any of the guys that I'm about to name can win here. So I do like the I do like the longer odds, but uh, let, let's get this thing started. The shortest odds that I like are Keegan Bradley at eighty to one. I think that's ridiculous. He's got a couple of top tens here. He's a great ball striker. Checks the box and strokes gained approach. Opportunities gained. Um, playing well right now. I think Keegan at eighty to one is interesting. And then I got three guys at a hundred and fifty to one. This is an invitational field only. There aren't one hundred fifty guys in this field. 
And I think any one of these three guys could win this event very easily. Corey Connors, who just won his first PJ Tour event the week before the Masters to get into Augusta National, has played well since then. He's one of the best iron players on the PJ Tour when you look over the last 24, 50 rounds. He's outstanding. He's 150 to 1. Uh, Matt Every, who's also playing sneaky good right now. Matt Every is, uh, is, is playing well, and he's a proven multi-PGA Tour winner. Now he's won at Bay Hill every time he's won. He's never won at a different golf course, but this could be the one. If David Lingmurth can win here, if William McGurk can win here, Matt Every can win here at 150 to 1. And then find that guy who's played a little bit better than, than, than Matt Every consistently for the last few years. Nick Watney, typically a West Coast guy. Nick Watney at 150 to 1. I like him. And then finally, I got one more at 50 to 1 for a top 10 finish. 50 to 1 for a top 10 finish. Boo Weekly. Okay. Played pretty decent here at the Charles Schwab Cup. Boo Weekly is a multiple PGA Tour winner. Good ball striker. Control of his golf ball all the time. Doesn't get it in a lot of trouble. Can hit fairways. Can hit greens. Uh, 50 to 1 for a top 10. I like that for old Boo. Boo Weekly. That's, that, that's my DraftKings Sportsbook picks of the week. Wow. Boo. Okay. I'm all right there. Look, I, you know, I agree with the longer odds, and I think there, you know, certainly some de- there's definitely some value here on, in the sports book. But just to give you some shorter plays, I do like Adam Scott at 25 to 1. I think that's definitely worth a play. I like Xander Schauffele as well. I didn't mention him on the show as a, as a play, but. I do think if you sometimes did. if you're not oh, Xander Shoffley? No, you did not. Xander Shoffley. Sometimes I think if you're not gonna play a guy on, on DraftKings as far as the uh as far as DFS is concerned, maybe you'd take a shot on him uh in the sports book. Yeah. You know, just if you if you got no ownership to one guy, we'll put him on the sports book side. See what, what yeah, happens. Yeah, you know there. what? Ownership doesn't matter when you're betting on the sports book. It doesn't. So at twenty eight yeah. to one. Pro, that's a that's a, that's a pro tip. There you go. So twenty-eight to one, I like Xander Shoffle. Uh Longer odds, I'm with you. By the way, Keegan Bradley was one of the guys I wrote down at eighty to one. I love that. Phil Mickelson, I did mention on the show. I took a flyer on him as when it came to DFS plays, and I like him at fifty-five to one. I'm okay with that. Keith Mitchell at one twenty-five to one. I think that's a good play. Um, this is going to shock you. I think you're going to like this one. J.B. Holmes at 175 to 1. He's always the guy, look, he's not in great recent form, but I just feel like that's that's J.B. Holmes. And what we've it's seen J. B. Holmes. It's J. B. with Holmes. this tournament is some of the guys that coming into this tournament, they haven't been in the greatest recent form, but then all of a sudden they just hit it. And I like I think he could be a good sort of flyer play at 175 to 1. So there you go. Those are my DK plays for uh, the sports book. Lots of long odds for you people. You know what I mean? I mean, like, just put a little small unit on these bets on DK Sportsbook, and we've made your season. All right? We've already done that a few times this year. You, If you've been watching this show and you've taken our bets, you, you should have, be up. You should be up. If you're not, then you're doing it wrong. You're, what, put, you're you putting money on. You're, you're not. You're lying to us, and you're putting other money on, like, basketball and something that we don't know about. Who does What's that? Happening? Yeah, or, like, hockey. Yeah. You well, you like hockey. I like playoff hockey, yeah, I do. The Boston Bruins were up three to two, by the way, before we uh, started recording, and I'm not, not a big Bruins fan. Pulling from the St. Louis Blues. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh be sure to check out the Tour Junkies podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. This has been Tour Junkies After Dark, presented by our friends at DraftKings, who hopefully will let us back on the show next week after saying testicles. Too many times. May your screens be green for the memorial. We will be back next week for the RBC Canadian Open. Tour Junkies After Dark. I'm David Barnett. That's Pat Perry. May your screens be green. See ya!